on CFD from scratch. We talked about the governing equations and pressure, and then in this video we're going to talk about the finite volume formulation. So we assume a two-dimensional rectangular domain, and we divide that domain into a, a computational grid where each grid uh, cell has a size dx by dy. We label uh, the volume in two dimensions. The volume is given by delta x times delta y, and corresponding face areas of a given volume are given by delta x or delta y. We label the faces of a given cell as the east face, the north face, west face, and the south face. And then we'll let the lower left corner be our base grid point and x increases to the right and y increases upwards. And we'll index these cells by ij where i indi indicates the x direction and j indicates the uh, y direction. When we're going to, what we're going to do is integrate our equations over these cells and our momentum and continuity equation are, are already written in integral form so that'll be facilitated that will facilitate our use on a computational grid we make two assumptions in the finite volume method here they're not required but we're going to make them and they're common first is that properties are uniform inside a given grid cell and the second is that properties are uniform along the given face and that'll make the integration much easier um, so let's go ahead and look at these. The momentum components here, we, the momentum equation was a vector equation, so we'll look at the uh, u momentum component, the x momentum component, and the y momentum component, so called v momentum. Uh, so where before we would have had uh, v vector here, v vector here, we now have little u uh, and little v, where v is not, not a vector quantity. Um, in these equations, uh, bef uh, in these equations, I uh, vector i is not to be confused with index i. Vector i is the unit vector in the x direction, and vector j is the unit vector in the y direction. Um, <clears throat> so for the momentum, for the x momentum equation, u momentum. Uh, pressure operates in the x direction, hence the i, and in the y direction, p, the pressure operates in the uh, y direction, hence the vector j here. So we integrate the u-momentum equation over a given grid cell, and when we do that, we're going to perform this integration and along with these area integrations. So let's look at the first one, this integral d dt of the integral of u dv over the volume, applying the two, approx uh, two assumptions that we have. So first, because u is assumed to be uniform in the volume, we can pull it outside of the integral. d dt of u integral with respect to dv, and the integral of dv is just v. And v is delta x delta y, and delta x delta y is a constant, so we can pull it outside of the derivative. So the first term simply becomes delta x delta y du dt. So the finite volume uh, assumptions performing the integration is particularly straightforward. The second term uh, is an area integral, and we illustrate that by considering just the second term uh, in our previous equation. So momentum, look at this term. And the integral over the area is the integral over the whole edge of the cell. And since there's four faces, we'll split this integral into uh, four, an integration over the east face, west face, north face, and south face. Now, the unit normal on each of the faces is either, a, is either i, j, minus i, or minus j. So if we're on the east face, the unit normal vector points out and on the east face, n is just i, vector i. On the west face, n points to the left, and so n will be minus i. So this term is i, this term is minus i, hence the negative sign here. We do the same thing for the 
north and south faces are j and minus j. On the east face, dA uh, is going to be uh, delta y. Same with the west. And on the north and south faces, the dA is delta x. And then we evaluate these quantities. We assume quantities are uniform on the face. So v dot, so this u on the east, integrating on the east face will become ue. And then v dot i will become u, because the vector v dotted with the i direction gives us u. And we evaluate that on the east face. So we end up with ue, ue, delta y. And then this becomes u west, u west, delta y. And this becomes u north, v north, delta x minus u south v south delta x and that's what we have here now we do the same kind of thing to the other terms if we consider the other terms in our equation we have tau x dot n so tau x if we're on east or west faces we'll get tau x x and if we're on north or south faces we'll have tau x y and then for pressure we only have uh, east or west faces because i dot j for north and south is zero because i and j are perpendicular. So the final result when we apply those is given uh, by the following equation. Now this equation is written <clears throat> in terms of face values and so we need to then uh, write the face values in terms of the computational grid. And we do that by um, interpolating between neighboring points. So let's go back up to our picture of the grid here. So if we're dealing with this cell and we have values on the east face, for example, then we would interpolate between the two neighbors. So UE would be UI plus 1J minus or plus UIJ divided by 2. So we just take that plus that divided by 2. And we do the same thing for all those face quantities are interpolated. Now if we consider the pressure, a problem arises. So <clears throat> this problem is a so-called checkerboarding issue. And uh, if we look at P on the east face, we take the average uh, of the two neighbors of that east face. So I plus 1 plus I divided by 2. And on the west face, pij plus pi minus 1j divided by 2. And then if we um, insert those into the u-momentum equation, we get the following. So the u-momentum equation had this term minus pe minus pw over delta x. And if we insert these, then we see that we have pij minus pij, and that cancels to give us pi plus 1j minus pi minus 1j over 2 delta x. Now the problem with this is this is the term for the uij uh, cell, but the problem is that the uij cell only depends on its neighboring pressures and not on the pressure itself. And this effectively decouples u from the pressures. What that means is consider a one dimensional grid with the following pressure values 82828. If we were looking at this u cell, uh, the two pressures involved are this cell minus this cell, or 8 minus 8, which is 0. So this pressure, this cell is unaffected by this pressure field. And that's clearly not physical because the pressure gradient on this domain is non-zero. So we expect the pressure gradient, 8 to 2, to actually cause a change in velocity. But that won't happen because for any given cell, the pressures uh, cancel. Um, so what this results in, and of course this uh, will work in two dimensions also. So on a two-dimensional grid, 82828, 64646, 82828, any given cell in x, the eights cancel, and in y, sorry, x, the fours cancel, and y, the eights cancel, uh, or this two, the fours cancel, and the eights cancel, uh, results in any kind of this checkerboarding pattern uh, can arise and not impact the momentum fields, which is unphysical. So this decoupling of velocity and pressure can cause instability. Um, 
numerical error, which is always present, or noise in the solution can always be preserved, can be preserved and amplified, and that can cause uh, numerical problems with the solution. So to remedy this, we use a so-called staggered grid. We have three variables, pressure, U, and V, and we solve each of those variables on a different grid. So the original grid we're going to call the P grid, and that's where pressures will reside. But when solving the U-momentum equation, we take that P grid and shift it by half a, half a cell to the left. And then these blue arrows indicate the cell centers on this new so-called U grid. The U grid is such that we still have a finite volume for the U cell. And the pressures happen to lie on east and west faces of the U grid. And that's convenient because a U cell is going to have a pressure on the east minus the pressure on the west divided by delta x. And so we won't need to interpolate that at all. It's just available from the corresponding P grid. The U, the V velocity is similarly shifted. It is shifted one half grid cell downwards. So the result is, you can see the overlap of the cells if we look at a single grid cell and look at how the P, U, and V grids line up. And it's important to note that the, the U momentum equation will be integrated with respect to the U grid. The V momentum equation will be integrated with respect to the V grid. And the uh, continuity equation, which is going to give us our pressure equation, will be integrated with respect to the uh, P grid. Now if we were solving other scalars, like species mass fractions, for example, those normally will also reside uh, at the P grid. So this staggering of the grid is largely used for uh, momentum, pressure, uh, uh, coupling issues. Now. If we're looking at the U-momentum equation, then anything uh, east, west, north, south is all with respect to this U uh, grid. And similarly for the V, if we're integrating the V-momentum equation, east, west, north, south refer to the V grid. When we go to resolve those face quantities, like a, a P on the north for the V, it happens to be Pij. So if we're looking at Vij, then the corresponding Pij is on the north face of V. And if we're looking at Uij, then P east happens to be Pij. So, uh, so keeping those straight is important as we set up the equations. And that's summarized again here. So in the U-momentum equations, P east and west are needed. And instead of needing to interpolate those from the neighboring cells, P east is simply Pij directly, and P west is simply Pi minus 1j directly. And um, similarly for the V momentum equation, we have the north and south directly. Now this precludes any checkerboarding because instead of having, for a given U cell, the pressure difference is now one cell apart. It would be Pij minus Pi minus 1j divided by dx. And uh, you won't, any kind of gradient and pressure will be seen directly by the U cell without any uh, skipping of the intermediate cell that, are, that results in check reporting. OK, so let's look at the U momentum equation. The finite volume of equation that we found above is still correct. But now we interpret the east, west, north, south as being applied to the U grid. And all face quantities are with respect to the given U cell. So we, in, we still interpolate values to faces, but it's with respect to the given grid. Now, um, let's see, let's go back here. So uh, in addition, this whole quantity here, we're going to simplify that. Uh, combine terms and call this H U, H superscript U, big H. And so our momentum equation is du dt equals H minus P delta P over delta X. And this is the equation that we're actually going to end up solving where we'll evaluate H using these quantities. This form is, is convenient for 
writing the uh, pressure equations from the uh, continuity equation that we'll see in a little bit. So now if we interpolate all of these face quantities to <clears throat> cell values, then we, uh, we come up with U east is the average of the two neighbors of the east face. U west is the average of the two neighbors of the west face. U north is the average of the two neighbors of the north face, and so on. Similarly for V north and V south. All of these quantities are with respect to this blue U grid. Uh, <clears throat> if we look at the um, stress terms, tau xx east, this is the constitutive relation, and notice that nu here is kinematic viscosity, not velocity. And this du dx on the east face, we're going to approximate with a central difference. So if we're looking at this cell, and we need du dx on the east face, then we would approximate that by delta u divided by delta x. So in this case, du dx on the east face will be uh, ui plus 1j minus uij divided by delta x. And that's what we have. So we apply those central difference approximations wherever they arise on these uh, face quantities. Um, now, for the v-momentum equation, we can follow the exact same procedure that we did for the u-momentum, but apply it to the v-grid. Um, and we again write quantities with respect to their uh, respective grids when finding uh, cell faces in terms of grid values. However, there's a direct symmetry between the u-momentum equation and the v-momentum equation, and we can simply use that symmetry to rewrite the terms. So wherever you see an x, you make a y, and wherever you see a y, you make an x. u becomes v, e, east faces are north faces, west is south, etc. And for subscripts, if you see a ui plus 1j, it becomes a vij plus 1. So if you're shifting 1 to the right in u, then you shift 1 up in v. And so when you apply that, you get uh, the v-momentum equation. We similarly uh, collect terms and call it HV and we can interpolate all the face quantities in terms of the respective grid both for uh, velocities and for stress values. Okay and we'll stop there and discuss continuity and the pressure equation um, in the next video.